there, comic book friends. I'm Travis. It's time for another edition of Monster Comic Reviews, where I talk about my monster pile of superhero books. Of course, this week it's not a monster pile. The other books are the monster pile. Anyway, this is for books for the week of December 10th, 2014. Let's talk some comic books. First up, Batgirl issue number 37, the great Darwin C Cook cover. Um... See what do I want to say about the, about this issue. Um, okay, so besides the, the uproar that's on that's been on the internet about um, the kind of um, uh, transgender fupa that happens in this book and um, could certainly be considered um, you know offensive and, and that sort of stuff. That's been discussed. I don't really discuss that a whole lot. Um, the um, Creators in the book did an excellent job of apologizing for it. They made no excuses. They simply said, we screwed up. We'll try and do better. We're listening. So that's awesome. Um, give them kudos, kudos for that. Um, let's talk about the book beyond that. Um, I'm starting to really feel like now that this is a, um, it's, it's a clothes hanger uh, with this really beautiful dress on it. And nothing inside holding this beautiful dress up. It's it's um, uh, um, fashion over substance, um, largely for me. Um, Batgirl went from fighting serial killers, um, people who were out to destroy entire cities, to uh, now she's um, chasing down purse snatchers and. Um, and um, somebody playing dress up as her. Those, those seem to be her motivations um, as, as a superhero currently. And so she's dabbling in school to some degree. She's getting a grant of some sort. We're not really playing into that a whole lot. Um, she's not really superheroing other than she's got a guy now who's kind of her gadget guy. And um, she's going to parties to try and figure out who's, um, you know, messing with her. Um, I'm not even sure they're stealing her identity at this point. They're simply dressing up like, um, like Batgirl. But clearly not. I mean, because in the book, the Batgirl that's in here that she's chasing down, that she's offended, that is looking like her, is clearly not her. You know, she's covered in glitter, um, and, you know, actually it's a lot of fun, um, but, you know, it'd be like me dressing up as, as George W. Bush, and, and then they'd have to, everybody has to come after me, clearly, because I'm trying to in, in, impersonate George W. Bush. Um, so, I, I don't really buy that. I don't buy this like serious threat of of identity theft or that sort of thing. I mean, I guess you can, you know, strain really hard to work at it being that, but I don't see it as that. Um, but I'm not even sure how much story is here that's being told that's relevant to a twenty-something year old um, uh, woman. You know, clearly I'm not that, but I'm not even sure that's there really. Um, I, it, to me, it's, it looks good. It looks good. It looks flashy and stuff. Um, I, I appreciate change as much as anybody, but I don't think they're really getting anything out of this book. I mean, there's nothing there. Like I said, there's no substance. Um, on, on almost every aspect, she's less than, than, than what she was. Um, yeah, and, and, I, and I guess I think that's that's unfortunate. Um, I mean, clearly a different tone of the book. So, you know, maybe not dark. So maybe we don't go after serial killers and that sort of thing. Um, I, I don't know. It, it just it seems that they've simplified her life so much that um, there's there's no substance. I mean, there's not supposed to be substance in a 22-year-old's wife. Uh, life. I don't know. Um, I think my life was more complicated than this at 22. But whatever. Um, so, yeah. 
still buying the thing, obviously. Um, I'm buying it kind of out of a curiosity. Um, I want to see where it goes. I want to see what the direction they do. Uh, uh, now I'm curious to see if they're going to attempt to actually do something to try and pick up the pieces from the, the transgender um, screw-up that they did in the book. Um, can't imagine they're going to write a whole other story just to try and, and, and fix that because they have to have stuff plotted and worked out for quite some ways, I would assume. Um, so yeah, not horribly impressed. I like the way the book looks on, on one hand, and on the other hand I don't because... It feels like that's all it's about. It's about a fashion statement um, without substance. So, Batman Eternal, um, issue number 36. Um, I, you know, I, I, I enjoy this issue to some degree. It kind of put us back to square one, literally. Um, you know, Batman goes, this was all a ruse. Um, these are all people who are, you know, manipulator, you know, manipulated, not the manipulators. Um, you know, start all over again. Get me, get out there, Bat Family, and get me some, um, get me some clues. And um, so, 36 issues in, we're back to the beginning of everything. Um, so I don't know where the story's going to go from here. I mean, I am curious, but I think, also think it seems odd. They were back, back to Stein all over again. So, yeah, um, I'm trying to think of what other significant things were in this that I want to talk about. Um, they kind of clear things up with the whole Bard thing, which is really interesting. I did enjoy, um, I did enjoy that. You know that Bard has his own motivation. He wasn't truly just a puppet. Um, so that's all interesting. Uh, he takes it to a crazy level. Um, you know, there are some problems with the fact is, is the whole police force seemed to be behind him about him attacking, you know, about him arresting Batman, doing this martial law and all that, and now, you know, they all kind of turn against him. So, I don't know. Um, it, it is Batman Eternal. It's what Batman Eternal has been. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying the ride of a weekly book. Deadpool, Art of War, issue number three. Um... You know, it's Deadpool. It's got the Deadpoolism in it. This one wasn't as amusing as a whole. The last two, I feel like we had a story going. You know, it was funny. It's like, now we're just in a war. Um, and, and, and we get the kind of the, you know, synopsis of uh, the art of war uh, about the pitfalls of having an army and trying to maintain that army and moving that army around and all that sort of stuff. Uh, with less entertaining bits and pieces in here. They, they, they're some of the things that kind of maybe grown and be annoyed. Maybe some people think it's funny. Um, you know, the, the Loki and all of his armies are down in, in, on Earth uh, attacking it. Um, Deadpool tells Odin and Thor that's where Loki's at. They kind of freak out and, and um, you know, Deadpool's like, ah, he's no big deal. There's a slew of, um, of heroes down there to take care of him and Thor's like, I wouldn't be so sure. And he's like, Psh, you know, because he's like, I wouldn't be so sure because, you know, Loki's got a whole army. And, and, and Deadpool goes, shh, don't worry, we've got a Hulk. You know, straight out of um, the Avengers movie. Was, and then the next scene, the next scene is the Hulk literally pounding, you know, grabbing a hold of, of course, Loki and slamming him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Like the movie. The only thing that's different from the movie is after he's beat the heck out of him, instead of saying puny god, he says dumbass. Hulk says dumbass. So... I didn't think that was very funny. One thing I do find amusing, though, is this panel right here. Can you see that panel? That's Loki. Uh, you see what they're making fun of there? A certain variant cover um, of a certain female spider person? That's kind of funny. That part was funny. But that had anything to do with Deadpool. Uh, but as a whole, this felt like it slipped a little more back into... Um, the standard Deadpool affair, uh, it, it, you know, towards the end of it, Deadpool kind of loses his cool and um, starts going Deadpool on everybody. But um, curious to see how it ends. I think issue number four is the final issue. Um, and once again, I'll go back to not reading a Deadpool again. I believe this one was kind of cool. I do like the art um, 
and it, what, it has been amusing. This issue is less so, uh, but hopefully the final issue of it kind of you know, pulls it all together and makes it entertaining for me. Uh, Clarion, issue number three. Um, you know, Anna Seti, the writer, is completely gone off on on being Anna Seti uh, by this issue. Uh, we get lots of kind of random storytelling and plot points uh, thrown around um, to make it confusing and awkward and um, relatively difficult to follow as a as a reader as much as they possibly can. I mean, it's not. It's not complicated, it's just difficult. And um, the art isn't as strong in this issue. Uh, McCarthy does the breakdowns, uh, but the finishes are done some by him and some by some other people. So there's some inking done by some other people. So the art does change some throughout it. The paneling still kind of dynamically there, but uh, the actual art within it isn't quite as strong. Uh, and uh, clearly DC doesn't have a lot of faith in this book. Uh, because it's already marked as canceled. Um, issue six is considered the final issue of it. All it will have is this arc in it. Um, I don't even think I'm going to pick up the six issues. Maybe I will, uh, depending on what the rest of my order looks like, but certainly wasn't going to pick any more up um, if this was going to continue to be an ongoing. Um, so I don't know why I would pick the others up, other than just to say, oh, look, I've got the run of six issues. That mighty, mighty run. So, yeah, uh, not real impressed with that. And speaking of things I'm not impressed with, um, Spider-Man and the X-Men number one. Um, this is everything that I feared it was going to be. Uh, basically kind of, you know, uh, the nth level of stupid. Um, and for me, not stupid funny, you know, because I know sometimes when things get stupid, they get funny. Um, this didn't. I like the premise of this. Hopefully somebody's going to answer the phone. Or it's just going to ring. So um, the premise is basically for whatever reason, Wolverine, well, not for whatever reason, Wolverine has asked um, Spider-Man, kind of a dying last witch, you know, come to the school. There's a mole. I need you to figure it out. So Spider-Man shows up and he is teaching an ethics class, which I do find funny because right now Spider-Man's kind of back to being the old school public enemy number one in New York. So him teaching an ethics class, I think, is relatively funny. Um... But it's just kind of a stupid him having this class that is kind of out of control and him kind of labeling who the bad guys are periodically throughout the thing, trying to figure out which it is that he is going to, um, you know, who's he going to blame it on, who's going to be the bad guy, uh, kind of a deal. And they go to the museum and silliness happens in the museum. And then they end, at the very end of it, they end up on, um, what, dinosaur savage lands, the savage lands, I think is what it's called. Um, and it seems like every time I, yeah, the new Savage Land. It seems like every time I pick up a Spider-Man book anymore, uh, somehow it's, it has something to do with Savage Land, one of the last Spider-Man team-ups that I got had um, Devil Dinosaur in it, and the Savage Land where I don't mind Devil Dinosaur so much, I just don't really care about Savage Land. Um, so yeah, I won't be getting any more of these. Um, so, not impressed at all. Bummer. Thought that might be kind of cool to jump on a Spider-Man, um, X-Men book, you know, that could be, could have been really rich and interesting and dynamic, and I don't think it's any of those things. It's just, it felt like, it felt like the, it felt like the, um, Disney XD cartoons that Marvel's putting out, which I think are, um, quite honestly pretty, uh, horrific in, um, in execution and delivery, whereas, um, DC puts out a really good, um, Marvel cartoons and whatnot, um, uh, not Marvel cartoons, but puts out a good, um, superhero cartoon. I think Marvel's um, super cartoons really, really suck. And so do my kids. Um, so, yeah, that's what it felt like. It felt like those cartoons. Blah. So, that's it for superhero books this time around. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure I'll have other superhero books to talk about um, next week, clearly, because I always read superhero books. I love superhero books. Um, what were the superhero books from a week ago that I missed out on that I shouldn't read? I hear Thor. Here, Thor. I went to the chain store to pick up um, to pick up um, issues one, uh, one through three um, of the new Thor because everybody keeps talking about great is all they had was issue three. They didn't have one or two, and I didn't want to pick up just three and then try to mail order one and two after the fact because um, that gets expensive with postage and whatnot. So, don't know. 
I may not read that. I may wait for a trade on that, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, have a great one, everybody.